Beneath the calm surface of southern Luzon, the earth just exhaled again. In the early hours of October 26, 2025, a column of steam and gas rose more than 1,200 meters above Tal's main crater. It came with almost no warning. In a volcano surrounded by an estimated population of 20 million people living within 50 kilometers. Cities like Tagaytay, Batangas, and even Metro Manila are all close enough to feel the tremors or breathe the ash when Tal stirs. The eruption was short, sharp, and over before most residents even looked up. Yet, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology kept the alert level at its lowest. Level 1. Officially, that means abnormal. Unofficially, it means the ground is restless. What makes this eruption unnerving isn't its size, it's its silence. So, what does this quiet burst really mean? Could this be the beginning of another cycle? One that starts with a puff and ends in a plume that blots out the sun. Tal is deceptive by design. It doesn't tower like Fuji or Pinatubo. Instead, it sits low, hidden inside a lake, Tal Lake, about 50 kilometers south of Manila in Batangas province. From above, it looks peaceful, like an island floating on glass. But that island is the tip of a volcano, and the lake around it is the flooded mouth of a massive ancient crater. On October 25th, at around 5.30 p.m., Fivolk's instruments recorded a minor phreatomagmatic event, a burst caused by hot magma meeting cold water. Hours later, at 2.55 a.m. the next day, a phreatic explosion followed, pure steam ripping through rock. Then, at 8.13 and 8.20 a.m., two more bursts sent grey-white plumes two kilometers into the air. For locals, it was a reminder of 2020 the last major eruption that blanketed towns in ash and forced more than 300,000 people to flee. Since then, Volcano Island has remained off-limits, its trails abandoned and its crater steaming. But the tourism boats still circle the lake, fishermen still cast their nets, and all of them live within view of a mountain that can change everything in minutes. The question remaining is, does level one mean they're safe or just lucky? To understand why this new activity matters, we need to decode the language of the warning system itself. PHIVOLCS uses a five-tier alert scale for TAL. Level zero is normal, meaning that the system is quiet, though even at this level, a sudden steam burst is possible without warning. Level one is low-level unrest, means that some hydrothermal or tectonic activity is occurring. Steam-driven or gas-driven explosions can happen suddenly, but there's no sign of new magma rising. Level two is increasing unrest. This means possible magma intrusion and higher eruption potential. Level three and four is magmatic unrest and hazardous eruption imminent. Level five is hazardous eruption in progress. Right now, Tal sits at level one, which sounds reassuring. But here's the paradox. Level one doesn't mean safe. It means the volcano is doing something unusual, but not yet predictable. And that unpredictability, those sudden, almost impulsive gas bursts, are exactly what make Tal so dangerous. Even after the multiple explosions of October 25th and 26th, Fihai Vo LCS decided to keep it at level one. That decision was grounded in data. No sustained tremor patterns, no strong deformation, no magma-driven signals. But to anyone living around the lake, that nuance can be terrifying. Because level one is the zone of false comfort, the quiet that makes you stay close when you probably shouldn't. So the question stands, if a volcano can launch a plume more than a kilometer high at level one, what else could it do before anyone has time to react? Picture a pot of water on a stove with a crack in the bottom. Now imagine that crack leads straight to molten rock. That's Tal. The island sits above a shallow chamber of magma sealed by water and clay. As heat seeps upward, water trapped underground flashes into steam. If that steam has nowhere to go, it explodes. A phreatic eruption is exactly that, steam-driven, no fresh magma. A phreatomagmatic eruption happens when magma actually touches water fragmenting into ash and gas. And a magmatic eruption means the magma itself rises, 
gas expands and all the power locked inside is released. The danger is that at Tal, these stages can happen within hours of each other. The lake surrounding the volcano acts like a loaded gun. Water above, heat below. It doesn't need weeks of warning, sometimes not even minutes. Even when the crater seems quiet, chemical reactions continue beneath the surface. Every bubble of gas, every rumble deep underground, is the system adjusting or priming itself for the next break. The 2025 unrest unfolded like a stuttering heartbeat. On October 25th, around 5.30 p.m., a plume rose 1,200 meters from the main crater, the first phreatomagmatic burst. Overnight, another smaller explosion at 2.55 a.m. marked a shift in pressure. Then two more bursts mid-morning on the 26th produced plumes reaching up to 2,100 meters. Instruments detected sulfur dioxide emissions averaging about thousands of tons per day, confirming magma degassing beneath the surface. Yet, the seismic network stayed relatively calm. Few volcanic earthquakes, no sustained tremor. To PHIVOLCS, that meant the system was venting pressure, not building it. So the alert stayed at level one, but these bursts broke a pattern. Typically, Tal quiets toward the end of the wet season. Seeing renewed explosions this close to November is unusual. It hints that the volcano's hydrothermal system is recharging faster than expected, and that shallow heat is rising again beneath the lake. For now, the dangers are subtle but serious. Steam and gas plumes can rise high enough to deposit fine ash downwind, coating roofs and irritating lungs. When winds blow west-southwest, as they did during the October 26th events, towns on that flank, Laurel, Agoncillo, and even parts of Tagaytay, are the first to feel it. Sulfur dioxide creates VOG, volcanic smog that stings the eyes and throats of anyone near the shore. Ballistic fragments, chunks of rock thrown from the crater, can still strike within a kilometer radius. And because the entire island remains officially closed, anyone venturing there for photos or tours is putting themselves in range. The lake adds another variable. If a stronger blast hits, the water can surge inland, creating mini tsunamis around the rim. Even a small explosion can ripple outward fast enough to capsize boats. So the advice is simple. Monitor bulletins, stay off the island, Keep masks and eye protection handy and treat every gas smell or ash drift as a cue to move indoors.